Well, good evening. It's uh, Tuesday evening, Tuesday the 30th of June, and uh, uh, welcome to this uh, short little evening prayer. Um, let me start with a verse, as we usually do from um, Psalm 85 tonight. Psalm 85 verse 6 says this to the Lord, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. So may the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, well, I was just about to say, we'll uh, pause quietly for a moment. Um, reminded me the um, children in the garden with um, the basketball and uh, there's um, Richard's mowing the lawn as well. So it may not be quite as quiet uh, uh, a moment, but still we'll reflect and pause and um, chance to uh, give thanks and um, uh, reflect a little bit on the day that's coming to an end. It's good, isn't it, to recognise the God, the Lord Almighty, who made heaven and earth. His uh, mercy is new every morning. Uh, he plans our days for us and uh, nothing takes him by surprise. So save us, O Lord, while waking. Guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Well, a verse of uh, scripture uh, for Tuesday evening from Matthew chapter 11. Uh, familiar words. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, I wanted to uh, read um, uh, that verse particularly is listed down here for Tuesday evening uh, in uh, the Church of England Little Liturgy for um, uh, night prayer. But um, also before um, I read a couple of verses from Romans, which is the New Testament passage appointed for tonight, which I think when you when you hear them initially, it can uh, sound uh, like it is uh, a burden from Jesus, a yoke um, uh, that is a burden. Um, but we need to remember Jesus' words here. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me uh, read you what um, Paul says in Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. He says, therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This, Paul says, is your spiritual act of worship. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of of worship. Uh, well, I always try and drink uh, lots of water. Here's um, uh, my glass of water today. Um, I haven't got it here, but we've got a glass in our bathroom. I imagine you've got a glass in your bathroom. Um, I suppose it could be um, any uh, cup or glass, couldn't it? But um, the one in our bathroom, well, it's, it's not just any cup uh, or glass. Um, it's the toothbrush cup. Have you got one of those? Um, with the toothbrushes and the toothpaste in and um, well the funny thing about the cup in um, our bathroom is well you'd never want to use it as a cup to drink from not like um not like this glass here it's really manky and and dirty and we never drink out of it um, because it's the well it's the toothbrush cup and our toothbrushes and toothpaste um, are in it um, but you could say uh, you could say that that um cup in the bathroom is holy it's a holy cup it's been set apart that's what holy means set apart at some point by someone uh, precisely for uh, that very purpose it's holy to the bathroom it's holy to the the toothbrushes uh, and uh, the toothbrush holder the uh, reformer uh, Martin Luther in his commentary on Romans uh, he says this on on these verses in Romans 12 he says uh, of something that is holy to God he says it is holy, that is, it is it is separated, set apart, detached, kept away from what is unclean as something that is taken for some other use, set apart only for a use worthy of God. And so dedicated, dedicated to God. Well, that is how Paul describes the Christian, isn't it, here in, in Romans 12. Uh, dedicated, holy and pleasing 
uh, to God. The Christian believer who has received mercy from God, grace and mercy, he says in response to that, we are to offer our bodies, our whole selves, as living sacrifices which are holy, set apart and pleasing to God. It's striking, isn't it, just as we're uh, starting to think about um, church, uh, start restarting church uh, services. Paul reminds us, Paul reminds us here that in view of God's mercy, this is to be our spiritual act of worship. Our worship is, well, is not just watching a YouTube service for, for 45 minutes or joining in with a Zoom Bible study on screen or, or even getting back, back into um, our beloved building and, and getting services restarted. Our worship, Paul says, is much more radical than that. It is whole life sacrifice. That's the picture he gives us here. I mean, for the Jews uh, and the people Paul's writing to in their day, these would have been incredibly provocative images, wouldn't they? Uh, picture a temple, a, the Jewish temple or, or any um, uh, temple in Paul's day. Um, Paul here is not talking about some limp animal laid involuntarily on an altar. He's talking about living sacrifices, offering our bodies as living uh, sacrifices, active, willing, uh, responsive sacrifices, giving up all that I am. Um, I'm not asked here to give up um, something that I own. I'm not even asked to give up something that, that I value, something outside me. No, I'm asked... I'm asked to give the best of me, to bring me, um, uh, to bring uh, myself, to lay me on the altar. This, Paul says, is your spiritual act of worship. And as I give all of me, it is to be holy, set apart, pleasing to God, a life that is utterly set apart for him. Not lived for me anymore, but, but lived for him. All of me and all of me all of the time, uh, and all of me with nothing held back, a living sacrifice. And of course, as we, as we do that, as we give all that we are in response um, uh, to all that God has done for us, Paul is all the way through his letter to the Romans. He never once lets us think that it is our work, our merit that earns God's favour, that somehow it's because of what we do that makes us and puts us in the right with God. And well, he stresses that here, doesn't he, as he starts chapter 12, as he starts teaching uh, practical things for the Christian. In, he says, in view of God's mercy, in light of everything I've said, therefore, chapter 12 starts, therefore, in, in view of everything that I've said about God's grace, about his gift of righteousness, uh, our, our living, our living sacrifices, our uh, response to God is just that. It is a response. Uh, it is not works. It is not trying to earn something. But it is the glad, willing response to all that God has done for us. Well, let me lead us in a prayer. Our Father God, this might sound like a burden to give up all that we are, to lay our lives, all of our lives, all of us, uh, all of uh, that we are, um, and to lay that on the altar uh, for you. But Father, when we consider all that you have done for us, when we consider that in view of your mercy, uh, well, it is nothing by comparison. You tell us, Jesus tells us that his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And Father God, for us to uh, live out our lives in glad, grateful response to all that you have done for us, it keeps our perspective right. And so, our Father God, we ask that you would help us to um, uh, be willing to do that, to uh, live for you with all that we are. Uh, to worship you with every breath that we take and every um, ounce of en energy in, in, uh, down to our last uh, sinews of strength. Father, we pray that you would uh, so move us by your grace and mercy that we would uh, live in every way in, in all that we are and all that we do for you and your people and your purposes and your glory. Father, we ask for your grace and mercy and by your spirit, grace, to help us to do that. Amen. Continue to pray with the collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin by your grace and mercy. You've sent the spirit of your son into our hearts, whereby we call you father. So give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, to lay our lives down as living sacrifices, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And some prayers that the Church of England have given us for this time. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. Lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And be present, O merciful God. Protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to pray the uh, Lord's Prayer in the traditional form. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so in peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, every blessing and uh, good night and uh, see you soon.